Let's talk about a unique situation with EPS when there's a little bit more complex. And this is one of those examples where earnings per share gets a little bit more complex. Uh, we're gonna look, use the if converted method for convertible. So convertible preferred stock is, some of you might say, hey, is all preferred stock convertible? Not necessarily. The nice thing about preferred stock and bonds and these other things is they can be written up to have certain features uh, that are unique to them. For example, Facebook has a senior shares that have like, like multiple voting rights, more voting rights than common. So you can have a number of different features. And so in this example, we're going over earnings per share for convertible preferred stock. So these are preferred shares that can be converted into common shares. And you might say, well, why would we convert into common shares? That doesn't make any sense. Well, when it comes to the markets, there's one thing that makes sense. It's the nice thing about capitalism. The only color that matters is green. So when it comes to convertible preferred stock, guess what? The only reason people convert into common shares from preferred is if it's because they're making more money by doing so. So if you have a preferred stock and you convert, it's going to be worth more. It's important to note that preferred shares are frequently used by venture capitalists in funding startups because they want their preferred shares uh, to have certain rights if the startup goes bust. If it doesn't go bust, they'll convert those preferred shares into common shares, make a ton of money, do great. But if things don't go the way they want or if things are, you know, need to be changed, they will change the structure of those preferred shares and they might take over the business, they might do something else, vote out who the CEO is, the founder, these type of things. That's how it's done with convertible preferred shares. So let's assume these convertible uh, preferred share uh, shares that are out there uh, can convert into these common shares. And let's let's go through an example. The net income, there's net income of $1.75 million. So net income of $1.75 million, we get that from the income statement. An average of 500 shares of common stock outstanding. Oh, the average is given to us. Oh, isn't that nice? Oh, we don't have to do that weighted average. So it's there, but it gets trickier. 20,000 shares of convertible preferred are outstanding. So we have 20,000 shares convertible preferred outstanding. No other potentially dilutive securities. All right, so this is a question targeting us. We know how to do convertible preferred. So each share of preferred pays a dividend of $10 per share. So $10 per share times 20,000 shares, that's about $200,000 in dividends. And each is convertible into five shares of the company's common stock. People often miss that because the word five is written out instead of like a number, right? So they miss it sometimes when they're doing it, but you got to remember, so one share converts into five common when it wants to convert. And now it might not want to do that because it's making more from this dividend, but when that one share converts, it's going to be five, it's going to be five. I feel like I'm doing my, like my kid magic, right? Like the, uh, anyway, so uh, I, I, convertible for, uh, preferred, converts into five shares of the company's stock. Calculate the company's basic and diluted earnings per share. Okay, so diluted earnings per share is unique. What we're doing in diluted earnings per share is we're saying, okay, this is the basic earnings per share, but what if people that had the right to show up and eat some of our net income, what if they showed up and did eat it? That's what the whole point of diluted is. The basic earnings per share is just what's the weighted average shares outstanding? Diluted earnings per share says, yeah, that's the weighted average shares outstanding, but you know, we have these convertible options that could happen and all these other things. And while they haven't exercised those rights, um, there's a possibility that they would. And so as a result, we will want to uh, factor that into the diluted earnings per share. So let's do the calculation. Let's note a few things first, okay? Let's note, okay? Let's note a few things first. We have an average of 500 shares of common stock. Boom. We have our net income of 1.75 million. And we have 20,000 shares of convertible preferred outstanding. They pay a dividend of $200,000. I got that because of this $10 per share times the 20 gets us to the preferred dividend. And they convert at a rate of five shares of the company's common stock. So that means one to five, 20 times five. So this will be, so this will we'll do this ref dividend. 
is 200,000, and then they convert at a five to one ratio, so that means it's gonna be 100,000 when they convert of common shares. Okay, and so we take net income to get to get our uh, to get our basic. To get our basic earnings per share, we take our basic, we take our net income. We subtract the 200,000 of preferred dividends. And we take that over the 500,000. Those are our common shares outstanding. So basic equals that whole equation right there, okay? So let's find out what that, that is. So when we do this, our basic, our basic earnings per share is $3. When we do this, we get a, a $3.10. That is our basic earnings per share, $3.10, okay, $3.10. Well, $3.10 is what's owed, is, is what the common shareholders have a right to. Remember, our preferred dividend is $10 a share, and these convert at a rate of five shares. They convert at a rate of five shares, common shares, to every one of preferred. And the preferred shares pay a dividend of $10 per share. Well, if they were common shareholders, they get five shares. Five shares at $3.10 if they were common. Essentially, that's, that looks like that might, it might be more profitable to actually be a common shareholder. And so we would want to factor in because, I mean, the earnings they, they, they get might be close to, you know, 15 if you look at it. So we have to calculate what the diluted earnings per share is. So let's go through and do that. So uh, if they converted, if these guys converted uh, to uh, common share uh, common shareholders, we would start off with that numerator and the numerator is still going to be set 1.75 million. But something's different. They converted, they get to get their dividend also as a Holder? No, of course not. Of course they don't. No, they get a big fat goose say you're not common. You're not preferred anymore. You're a common. And so they're a common share, so they don't have any preferred dividends. So our numerator has changed. Pretty cool. And then our denominator, we have 50, uh, 500,000 shares outstanding for the year. Well, guess what? If we have 20,000 shares, this is where people get screwed up. They forget the 20,000 shares convert at a rate of five to one. Well, guess what? That 500,000, we have to add 100,000 shares because they're now all common shareholders. You add those two together and you end up with 600,000 as the weighted average shares, common shares outstanding. So that 1.75 million divided by the 600,000, uh, that gets you, $2.92 per share. And you'll notice something. The diluted earnings per share is lower than the basic earnings per share. Why? Because when we do diluted earnings per share, we're always adding to the denominator. And there might be something like in this case that takes away from the numerator, but we're adding to the denominator. And the fact that we added to the denominator and took away from the numerator, and it's still, and, and the value, the 2.92, we look at that uh, related to five shares. Uh, the you know, five times two is equal to ten. But this is two point nine two, so they would actually be making more on the net income basis uh, uh, by being a common shareholder. But that option to convert is a valuable option, so they didn't convert. So this right here, it, it's a reasonable thing to include this in the numerator and denominator because uh, you know there's value there for them if they did convert. So the two point nine two is the diluted earnings per share. And the basic earnings per share is 3.1. That is a uh, convertible preferred stock in, in the example. And this is another way to present it. You have basic earnings per share right here eh, eh, as your calculation. Well, you have your net income. You have your less your preferred dividends. This is what goes in your numerator. What goes in our denominator? The 500,000 less if, if converted. Well, if basic, we don't assume any conversion. We only take the people that are there at the table right then. 
And so our denominator is 500,000, so we get three, $3.10. Diluted earnings per share, if converted, well, we have the net income, and we don't have any preferred, preferred. We don't have any preferred. So this is great, we have zero. So zero, that's perfect. So our numerator, instead of 1.5, it's 1.75, and uh, 1.55, instead of 1.55, and then uh, we have our weighted number of shares outstanding. And then we add those converted shares to the, get the new denominator of 600,000. And then it's just plug and chug. We divide the two and we get that as our answer. That's an if converted method.